Hello, we're finally after a uh, four or five week hiatus going to re bring to restart the uh, study of, he of the Hall of Faith from Hebrews. We're continuing the story of Joseph, which is almost at an end. He's revealed himself to his brothers, and uh, and they they got Jacob about to come with them to move to Egypt. We take care of by Joseph. We're picking up in uh, chapter 46 of the book of Genesis. So Israel took his journey with all that he had, yeah, that's Jacob who was renamed Israel, and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. So he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. And uh, so uh, Jacob is trusting God again. Though personally me, I just said, oh, God, why didn't you come down before and talk to me and tell me Joseph wasn't dead? been 20 years <laughs> but uh why didn't you uh, tell me that but uh joseph uh but now now jacob knows that joseph is alive again and uh god has appeared to, to jacob and told him that he will be with him going down to egypt and that one day he'll be brought out and that's what the book of exodus is about so uh so, continuing in Genesis chapter 46, verse 5. Then Jacob arose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, their wives, in the carts which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt. Jacob and all his descendants with him, his sons and his sons' sons, his daughters, his sons ours, and all his descendants he brought with him to Egypt. And then there's a very long, long list of names of people that were brought along. Verse 26 says, And all the persons who went with Jacob to Egypt, who came from his body, besides Jacob's sons' wives, were sixty-six persons in all. And the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. Verse 28. Then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. You may remember that. That is uh, where jo that was the best land in Egypt where uh, Joseph wanted his family to live. And they came to the land of Goshen. So Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he presented himself to him, and fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. It has been over 20 years since he saw his father. But it must have been some sight to see Joseph, the second in command of all of Egypt. Who knows what kind of uh, beautiful, incredible, expensive clothes and jewelry, whatever all he was wearing. Comes up in his chariot, then gets off the chariot, and he just... <laughs> falls on his father, hugging him, weeping. And Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, I have, since I have seen your face, because you are still alive. So, uh, although, personally, that wouldn't be the sentiment I would want to have. <laughs> okay, I've seen it. Now it's time to die. And Joseph does not, or Jacob does not die right away, but what he's saying is he feels complete, he feels happy, he, can, he could die happy now. Verse 31, And then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and those of my father's house, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for their occupation has been to feed livestock. And they have brought their flocks, their herds, and all that they have. 
So it shall be, when Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? That you shall say, your servants' occupation has been with livestock, from our youth even till now, both we and also our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So the Egyptians didn't like to be around shepherds. They didn't like anyone who apparently worked with livestock at all, which is kind of hypocritical because I'm sure they ate meat, <laughs> you know, but... There are lots of hypocritical ideas out there mm -hmm. that uh, contradict each other that people have all the time. But anyway, this was his plan for how to make sure that they do get that good land of Goshen. Chapter 47. Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father, my brothers, their flocks and their herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan, and indeed they are in the land of Goshen. He took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. And then, predictably, as Joseph had predicted, Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? If you've been paying attention, you know what their, uh, what their answer was. <laughs> We're shepherds. Yeah, the whole family's shepherds. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know of any competent man, men among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. In other words, they got good jobs too. <laughs> So verse 7, Then Joseph brought his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. Well, to me, 130 years does not seem like few days. <laughs> that seems like quite a long lifetime, but if you look at how long uh, Isaac and Abraham and before them lived, it was short, though he still had a few more years left in him. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And that's, that is quite something to think about it, but uh, it seems that Abraham and his family did mingle with kings. You know, you got uh, Abraham talking to Abimelech and <laughs> all that. Yeah. To me, that would probably be a big deal meeting a <laughs> the one in charge of the land I'm in, but apparently uh, they they were uh, cons they were uh, able to do that, and I suppose in this case, since Joseph was now second in command of all the land. I mean, he came in as what? A slave. A slave. And now he's second in command of all the land, and his family has just joined him. And Joseph situated his father, in verse 11, and his brothers, and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread, according to the number of their families. Now, one thing to remember, this actually is a big deal, because what's going on in the land? Famine. Yes, a terrible famine. It's only been going on a few years, and it was going to be a total of seven years. Now, there was no bread, in verse 13, in all the land, for the famine was very severe. So the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? 
for the money has failed. They're out of money. They're out of money. But they're still hungry. You know, the lack of money does not make you not hungry anymore. <laughs> so they're saying, you're going to just stand here and let us starve to death? Just <laughs> watch us starve to death? Then Joseph said, give me your livestock. Give your livestock and I will give you bread for your livestock. Them off the money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph. Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the cattle, and the herds, and for the donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. So they are out of money. Now they're out of livestock. What do they got left? <laughs> because guess what? They're still hungry. They're still going to be hungry. Verse 18, when that year had ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We'll not hide from my Lord that our money is gone. My Lord also has our herds of livestock. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, and both we and our land? Buy us in our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants of Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land may not be desolate. Then Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every man of the Egyptians sold his field, because the famine was severe upon them. So land became Pharaoh's, and as for the people, he moved them into the cities, from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other end. Which makes me think about something in the book of Exodus, you know, uh, the idea of two different things happening in the book of Exodus. One is... Uh, all that God cursed Egypt with, it killed a lot of their livestock and everything, but guess what? All of that was obtained, earned by Joseph. Plus uh, the idea that when they left, they plundered the Egyptians. It was the stuff that Joseph had earned. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Joseph had what, been what got Pharaoh rich, super rich to begin with. Only the land of the priest he did not buy, for the priests had rations allotted to them by Pharaoh, and they ate their rations which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their lands. Then Joseph said to the people, Indeed I have bought you and your land this day for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the harvest that you shall give one-fifth to Pharaoh, four-fifths shall be your own, as seed for the field and for your food. For those of your households and as food for your little ones. So they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt to this day that Pharaoh should have one fifth, except for the land of the priests only, which did not become Pharaoh's. Excuse me. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. In the, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. Remember, God had promised they would prosper there. And they had, and uh, verse 28, and, ja and, Jacob grew, and Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. You know, he's been talking about dying for a long time, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Seventeen years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Now if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. And that's just the way that they made vows then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my father's you shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you said, as you have said. Then he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of his bed. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was old, or told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took him 
took with him his two sons. We're in chapter 48 now, in verse 2, that Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offspring whom you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers and in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Paden, Rachel, who was Joseph and Benjamin's mother, died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way when I was when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Ephrath. And I buried her on, there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. When Israel saw Joseph's sons, and said, or then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, These are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, so that he could not see. And Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact God has shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. You know, and uh, normally he would have had his hand on the his right hand on the firstborn. <laughs> so he did it opposite. But uh, Jacob himself was a secondborn. <laughs> He knew that uh, that the firstborn right would be on would be on the other. So God, before whom my fathers, or before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day. And that's something to remember about God. He's been with us our whole lives, taking care of us, even before we knew him. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow in multitude in the midst, into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the hand of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. Verse 19, But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, by saying, by you Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. And thus he said Ephraim before Manasseh. And it, then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. And now, uh, Jacob's last words. He is going to bless all of his sons and say some things about them, some prophecy. Chapter 49. 
And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. So, sounds good so far, right? Mm -hmm. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Uh, Reuben had had relations with one of uh, Jacob's concubines. <laughs> You know, um, so, uh, displeased him. <laughs> you know. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So, uh, they're at a certain point, uh, their sister Dinah had been raped. And what Levi and Simeon did was they acted like they were in agreement with the group of people that had done this because the rapist had wanted to marry her. And so they told them they... We can, we can let this happen and have peace with you guys if all of your men get circumcised. So, while, so they agreed to it. And while all the men in that village, that town, were recovering from their circumcision, Simeon and Levi went there and slaughtered them all. All of them. Not just the rapist. Not just a few. All of them. You know, something should have been done about it. Jacob was seemingly doing nothing about it. Something should have been done about it, but not slaughter the whole village for the crimes of one man. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people, binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. So, what do we know about the future of Judah? First, the, D the Davidic line, the kingly line of starting with King David, who came from there, and ultimately who came? Jesus. Jesus Christ. In this passage, referred to as Shiloh. But, uh, binding his donkey to the vine, donkey's colt, <laughs> washed his garments in wine, really in blood. There are other prophecies uh, mentioning that sort of thing, too. There are Messianic prophecies right there. I don't really understand why a Jewish believer who reads their Bible doesn't get it that Jesus is the Messiah that they've been waiting for. I mean, I have a Jewish Bible that's just the Old Testament, and this stuff is in it. It's not like this stuff was added later by, by Christians. It's in it. Jesus was talked about in the Old Testament to bring them to him. Uh, verse 13. Zebulun shall dwell by the heaven of the sea. He shall become a haven for ships, and his border shall adjoin Sidon. Issachar is a strong donkey. I'm not sure I'd like to be referred to that way. <laughs> but, uh, lying down between two burdens. He saw that rest was good. He saw that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to bear a burden and became a band of slaves. Dan shall judge his people. 
as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heels, so that its rider shall fall backward. I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. Now the most notable person from the tribe of Dan was named Samson, one of the judges of Israel, who has quite a story. Verse 19, Gad, a troop shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last. Bread from Asher shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a deer let loose. He uses beautiful words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength. That's the story of Joseph's life there. So many things happened to him. Sold and betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, lied about, thrown in prison. But his bow remained in strength, and the, arm, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. By the God of your father, who will help you, and by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessings of your Father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. Up to the utmost bound of, everla of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who is separate from his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf, in the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their fathers spoke to them. And he blessed them, he blessed each one according to his own blessing. Then he charged them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in, a ca in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with a, with the, Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, as a possession for a burial place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is there were purchased from the sons of Heth. And when, Jacob, and when Jacob had finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. I think that's uh, probably where I'll stop reading today. But uh, what we got is, uh, is, the end, is the ending of the earthly life of Jacob. There aren't that many people in the Bible who ended well. But he was one of them. You know, he's a great story of redemption. You know, uh, in his youth, uh, he was not that nice of a person. <laughs> you know? He'd swindled his brother. He tricked his father, lied, stole. But then he... Uh, and he turned over to the Lord. And uh, he still went through things because as much as I wish it was true, when, you're, when you put your life in God's hands, that does not mean your troubles are all over. It doesn't. Wish it did, but it does not. <laughs> but through all the trouble, through all the trials, just keep trusting in God. That's the biggest thing you can learn from Jacob, from Joseph, from the Bible is to trust in God. He will bring you all the way through. I hope this has been a blessing. And uh, if it has, please like this, share, subscribe, contact us through comments or email or phone. There's lots of ways on the website to uh, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, go with God.